Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. I got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's episode of What a Horse and Tommy is Here. Yeah, Big, I got a complaint. What? Got a complaint. All right. Well, complaint. I've been looking at these class sheets already. Uh, and they got too many, all these shows got too many classes. They, I got a conversation this morning. 19 on the trainer show, they got 19 to class a night. Oh, yeah, okay. That's okay. Is that too much? No, that's just that's right. That's good. There's some 30, 31, they're in outer areas or whatever. And so we had a breakfast this morning, we had a discussion. Horse shows are coming, becoming like bean burning preachers. They just go on and on. You know, bean burning preacher, preacher too long. My big mama's beans are burning down. Right. So, you know, the trainer show done right though. Hey, the trainer show's doing it right there. Yeah. If I, I tell you, I wish people would start getting together. And if there's only one show on the weekend, have it for two nights. Yeah. Add some classes to Philadelphia's it. Philadelphia's going two But nights. cut it down. Absolutely. Yes, they're going down. Yeah. So there, there's always, where there's will, there's a way. I want everybody to know that there's always an answer to a problem. Absolutely. And the answer to the problem we got right now is we got to go to commercial. Let's do it. Pay bills. All right. We're going to go to commercial. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. Come one, come all, that's the motto at the new Feed for All store on Highway 64 East. Feed for All is family owned and operated by Christy and Eddie Guthrie along with their son Joe. This family will be available to serve your daily needs for all your agriculture animal feeds. Their goal is to provide feed in bulk or buy the bag wherever it is needed and will always be a phone call away. Christy and Eddie have always been very selective in the quality of the feed their animals were fed and their satisfaction with the Feed for All products is their guarantee. You will be satisfied as well. Watch your horses come running when you break out the Feed for All horse feed. Give Feed for All a call today at 931-492-4609 or stop by their store located at 2392 Highway 64 East in Shelbyville, Tennessee and pick up a load of feed today. Joe is ready to load it for you. Uh, feed for All! So good! More of What a Horse coming up. All right, got a couple of announcements. Let's go. I am tickled to death with this. The David Williams, Sugar Creek, put on auction for the Alabama Auxiliary, $22,577. That's an average of close to $800 per Stud feet. Oh, it's a record. But the big thing is they haven't even sold donated items yet. Yeah. This was just stud feet. This was just stud feet. There's nothing else. It's not banana, $200 no. banana puddings yet. No. We ain't no, got no. To, me and you've been going there for years. It was so big time. I wish they still had that. 
Heart of Dixie's this weekend, the 11th and the 12th in Philadelphia, Mississippi. My man Dan Waddell is going to be the judge. A good one. Oh, he, he is. Trainer shows next week, 16th through the 19th, 19 classes a night. Dean Baird, Smokey Cardwell, and my breakfast buddy, Robbie Spiller. She'll do it. Show starts 6 p.m. each night. That's going to be awesome. Now, Saturday, next Saturday, they're going to have the auction out at 40, Highway 43 auction. That's out there. At Why is it, buddy? Yeah. LaRue McWaters. Absolutely. That, uh, good. Mike Tibbs and them do a good job. Oh. Dave Roberts and them, they do a great job. You can call Dave Roberts if you want to enter a horse. 931-993-3127 or Mike Tibbs. 931-993-4886. The following weekend, or the next, the end of the month, 31st through April the 2nd is walking in the Smokies. The announcer's horrible. Who the, is he? Is that you that announced He's arrogant, he, horrible, he's horrible. He, he, he's ain't going. Lying. he ain't lying, he, he's telling you like it is. You can call Tammy. Now, talking to Tammy. Tammy is, Triplett. Oh, man. She's beautiful. Well, on on the Facebook, she's a bad confection. She's a baker. So you're not going to see Tammy Triplett on Facebook or whatever. It's baker. She's a, uh, I mean, she does cakes unbelievable. Well, she's a farm girl, too. Right, yeah. She's so, a great person. She plows, hauls hay. Mm -hmm. but you can call her at 423-612-0345 or Lexi Stennett, which... If she rides that horse in the stake this year, they're going to have trouble with oh, her, yeah. but she's tough. Uh, she can be reached at 828-550-8520. Nathan Clark, Steve Gladwell, and Jason Hughes will be the judge. But now, There's here a celebration is a judge. There may be two celebration judges Could be. There. There's a note in here, people. If you reserve a stall, you got to do it no later than March 15th to reserve one. If you reserve it, you're responsible for selling it or paying for it. Right, of course. Period. No cancellations. Gotcha. I like that. I was going to be here for a co-party. Hey, that's going to be a good one. Oh, no yeah. doubt about it. Last year was unbelievable. We, we got a message the other day from a beautiful young lady, hardworking young lady, but she said that you and I needed to see something. So well, I had her mother send there, it to there's me. There's a lot of things we probably need to see. Well, she said they need to see this. I bet you a hundred to a dollar I know who it is. What? Alex Joe Jacobs. You got it on the horse. Uh-oh. Now that's the horse. She, what is she, she riding here? That is the horse. <laughs> the D-A horse. Is this, is that, all right, I, I saw this. She turns around and you can see Dickie Scribner, I think. Well, I tell you one thing. <laughs> she said, "She said you and I need to see it because she was working on it, and she was going to enter that that ring flat foot walking." Well, she's doing good. That little girl can ride she, now. Well, she's got the greatest equitation right trainer in America. Oh, or yeah. Oh, but yeah. now she she is. I don't know this she's young lady. Little, just, now she's riding a little rough. She's trying to horse train right there. There's Dickie. Look here. Oh yeah. He's going. I don't think I can ride like that. <laughs> Good little pony. There's a daddy. He's gonna keep an eye out. Uh -huh. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, this little girl works hard at it, man. She doesn't, she doesn't back off. She goes after it. She can take it. And that's, that's it in a nutshell. That's what it's all about. You just getting with it. Bless her heart. She ain't she, big as a minute. She jumped on Cohan. I know. No fear. I notice her mama's got that helmet on her though. Yeah. But you, you can tell she's working. Cohen she said is they not were, Cohen and a lead line pony now. Oh, Lord, no. But now she, I will say this. She said that she was learning. She was working with this horse, and that's that's good. That is but very I, good. I love to see them kids get out there and hustle that is and go good. with it. Very I mean, good. shoot far. She that, just, that, uh, but that instructed her, her Lee Stewart, yeah. best in America. Oh, she no doubt about it. She's great at what she does. But we got a lot of good instructors. Tommy. Oh, yeah. Now, we do. There, there's a bunch of them. I used to go over there and watch them. We had one lead Jimmy around one time. <laughs> always, always got to do that. Huh? Yeah, he's still. I good, just, I sent him casserole dish. Ain't got nah, it back. Nah, he, he he's still kicking. He's up and run. We got some more. What we got? We we got a two-year-old mm -hmm. video that we're gonna show, and this this is a pretty good video. It's a two-year-old, and we're gonna start out with a three-ounce device. 
And then we're going to go to a four ounce mm -hmm. to see the horse how it goes. But like I say, now he's a, he's a two year old, and a lot of these two year olds, well, we're still working on them. Exactly. They're, they're still they're 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 not, selling right now, big time though. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of them selling, but they uh, this time of year all of them's not finished up. Mm -mm. And uh, I know the way that Jerry trains, he starts out very slow, which we're fixing to show a little bit of that in a minute because it is ready. So, right now, let's go that video. Let's watch it. Jerry, this is a two-year-old, but now, this two-year-old, y'all been working on him for a while because that's two-year-olds, you've got to take your time with them. Take your time with them and get them this steady. I like to put mine in the first time in show ring where anybody can ride them and get them broke. That's the biggest thing on a two-year-old is getting, taking your time and getting them broken up. His coat finally getting together. Well, this is what, 16 hands? Yeah. Of course, that's Jeremy, Jeremy riding him. But like we say, he's a two-year-old, yeah. so he's mm -hmm. gonna he's gonna come, he's gonna go. No, he's gonna be, but he's getting and getting him used to being in the ring. Well, that's another thing, because you it's, know, it's all lot. everything new to him. I hope he can walk off his butt. Oh yeah, now he he got a lot of walk in him. Yeah, a lot of potential. And he'll be showing as a two-year-old this year. This year, yeah. All right, we're going to make a couple of adjustments. Yeah. Tell you what, you can tell he's a big, you can tell he's a big yeah, rascal. He's a big one, yeah. Now, what are they going to do? They're going to, they, they've been using, what, a three? A three-ounce chain. They're going to add a four-ounce chain to him right here. They're going to go up to a four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, on these bigger coats, you know, it takes a little longer time because they're so bigger. But now, you'll see this coat in the future. I mean, when this coat's four, five, six years old, he'll be steady, keep getting better and better. Well, this right here is going to give people the a, a view at what just an ounce per foot yeah. will do. Because uh -huh. we've had this argument with a lot of people about the action device and how heavy it is. In, yes. in, in reality, it's six ounces. Yes. That horse right there. He'd weigh 1,100 pounds yeah. easy. Uh huh. You had a three ounce on him. Now we're putting a four, a four ounce, ounce on him. Chain on him. Makes you wonder what he'll look when you get to six, six on him. Six ounce. Yep. We now, pretty much try to keep no more than a three or four on these horses all the time, and you know, and then go up to a six when we get ready to go in the horse show ring. Right. You know. It's about like that TV show, Phone a Friend. That's just your phone a friend when you had that six to him. You can go that yeah. six ounce chain. But we try to rob him no more than a, than a three or four ounce chain. Now, he's a big baby. There's no doubt about yeah. that. And he can walk off his back end. He can. He can He can use that back end. And this coat's getting pretty broke. He ain't so much of a jump and jack and running right. and running and all this stuff here. I mean, he's real sensible. Well, it just takes time, and people yeah. got to realize these horses, they're, they're, they have their personalities, their attitudes and everything. He's about like a Shaquille O'Neal. It took Shaquille a little while before he got known. Right. But once he got known, he turned big time. There you go. Well, the longer you ride him, the better he's going to get. There's no yeah. doubt about that. You can tell the way he's changing now as he goes. That horse probably, he's not going to be a sorry. He's going to be more of a chestnut, isn't yeah. he? Tell you what, Jerry, there ain't nothing wrong with him. He walks off his back end. Yeah, he walks he off reaches. His... Getting better with his head shape. Yep. Yeah. Getting in time, getting in rhythm. That takes time. That's something that ain't just going to come overnight. Saddle time, that's all yep, it takes. That's all it takes, saddle time. Now.
I say he's getting in the rhythm right now. Yeah. He's just wanting to raise that head a little bit now. Going yonder. But I'm like you, Tommy. I love the back end. That's why you, you can't make a back end. No. You can't make a headset. Now, this other, you can work around, make, and do this, that, and the other. The God has to put that back end on. And that's what Walking is all about. They yep. drive off their back end. That's the whole purpose of that smooth ride that started with a flat shot horse That's it. at the turn of the century. But he's just getting better and better, and that's all that's all I care about is getting better. Man, that farm out there. Woo. Hey, it's getting they they just keep Beautiful. growing out there, buddy. Oh. I mean it's growing. What we got? Well, we I wanted people to see what it was for them to prepare a horse okay. and what takes place every morning before they even start, what has to be done to a horse. And there's some good information in this. Oh. So we're going to go. Jerry, Jerry Williams and his crew getting a horse ready. Good. The purpose of this video is to let everybody know exactly what goes on when you get a horse out and get them ready. Yes. The first thing, you have to take the wraps off. And I'll explain to everybody about the wraps situation. All right. The wraps is to keep that horse's legs protected. So he won't get no kind of blemish or nothing on his legs. So when you get ready to go through inspection at the horse show, that everybody know you have to have one. Yep. That he don't have no blemish and no cuts and no marks on his legs. It's right. just like socks protecting your feet. That's it. And that's why we, got, that's why we have him wrapped right, right here. And we got a blanket on him and a tail yeah, set. Because we're doing him, this, this is to explain what goes on every morning before these horses are ridden and before they're prepared for a horse show. Another thing we're going to show, of course, Jerry, Jerry does things a little bit different. I've been to barns where they use different kinds of petroleum oil to go on the horse's feet as far as to keep them greased. They'll use everything under the sun to, to condition the horse, including lard. Yes. They'll, some of them prefer Crisco. Mm -hmm. My buddy Jerry Williams, he'd rather have bacon grease. Yes, I, I, use, <laughs> I use bacon grease. I mean, I get that from my father from a long time mm -hmm. ago, and the bacon grease heals up anything. If anybody know anything about animals, dogs, cats, horses, I wear bacon grease is some of the best ointment to put on a horse to heal up. Any, well, it's a good conditioner, good too. Good conditioner. A super good everything. conditioner. And that, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at what is best for the horse. Yes. I know in uh, Save Lot, you can go to Save Lot and buy uh, lard in five gallon buckets. Yes. I have also gone and purchased it in like two and a half pound or two pound, five pound, uh, Crisco, di different makes of lard. Some people use it. But I, I kind of like the idea of bacon grease for several reasons. Number one, when you got the tail set and everything on them or, or a breast band, Sometimes it'll rub in front, and you use that bacon grease on there, and it'll help heal it up. Help it heal it up, and but I mean, I make my own bacon grease. I got a big pot at home. I get to eat the bacon, <laughs> but I save the grease to put on. How much of that bacon horse. does Jeremy eat? <laughs> I try to hide it from him. Huh. They save that bacon for later. For huh? later, yeah, that's right. Well, this is on the sly. This is a pony for 2005. And he is one of these that's pretty much automatic now, yes, isn't uh -huh. it? Just get him out and put an action device on him, let him do his thing. I will say this, he does love treats. And I tell you, a lot of people don't realize too that these horses love to get out and get exercise. And they love to perform. Oh yeah. Well, I've heard our older riders tell me more than once how when they go into the celebration, when they come down that chute 
Uh, Bill Harlan once told me that uh, his horse, he said, I can feel him swell up yes. like he knows what he's fixing to do. And he said, it, it's amazing the way they, they act when they do that. Yeah. You know, these horses here, they take on um, a lot of these older horses that you retire. Right. I got a few retired horses here. And every time we get ready to go to the horse shows and they see them horses with them ribbons and they get ready to load them horses, they get to run that stall because mm -hmm. they want to go to that horse show mm -hmm. too. I mean, they just, they just like to go out there and compete. Well, you, you said that, but there was somebody, I can't remember who it was, but they, they used to load theirs up every now and then, one of them, and carry it to a show. Yeah. Simply, simply so it would feel you know, but, but we're fixing to show you what they use to keep their horse's feet in moist condition, which I, I can't help but love it. I know Jeremy loves the bacon when he can get some of it, oh, yeah. but uh, it, it, it's you pretty neat. That. You want to see it? Yeah. All right, here, here's the bacon grease. We take it and put it on with our hands, so you know it can't be nothing bad about it. You use your own hand to use it on. Well, what I like is you you got a pan sitting over here in the corner full of it, but you I can see where you've been dipping it out and putting it in your cup. Cup, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I, I had one that, uh, scratched herself in the stall and uh, I took in bacon grease out there and we put on it and it wasn't but a few days and it healed it up. Yes. So I can understand why that would keep the horse's feet in good shape and that's that's what they they have to be unblemished. Right here right now they're tightening the band to uh, make sure that it it doesn't shake loose. Yeah they're like tying your shoelaces on your shoes. Right. And we loosen them bands when we get done. Like you take your shoelaces loose, we, we take the we take them, loosen them up, so they don't stay tied up all the time. Now we're going to take Sly out into the warm-up ring. Yes. And we're going to see what he does with Jeremy. Mm-hmm. Think Jeremy can ride him? I believe he can. All right, we'll we'll he try. He he's no youngster, but he'll he'll do. Get him ready for a youngster. Well, one of these days he's gonna he, he's gonna get upset with us. You know that, <laughs> don't you? You talking about that bacon grease? You know yeah. they used to use that for dogs with the mange. Yeah. Dogs used to get the mange. They take that oh, bacon yeah. grease and rub it all over. Well, I don't know of nothing much. I mean, I don't know. Growing up, if you burned yourself, your mother would either get butter or bacon, bacon grease. grease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we're headed out front. Yeah. All right, you know, I love going over there. I like watching them get ready. Y'all missed the whole point, though. What? What was the point? The movie The Help <laughs> says the same thing. You know The Help? Yep. Okay, and but they said it about Greece, Crisco. Crisco. What's the what's the difference? <laughs> That's it. Right. It's the same difference. All that great healing's done, but that's why he learned it from Roosevelt Williams. I know. That's exactly why. Your granddaddy. Yeah. <laughs> Many don't burn no chicken. But well, she does when she got that check. Right. She no. got that money. She burned the chicken. Right. She burned that chicken. Right. But that's the same premise. <laughs> The we, help. We, we, we got to go to commercial. Let's go. We're going to take a short call oh, for our sponsors. And this is a great example. Mm -hmm. Agenda Wins started his career under the guidance of Herbert Derrickson, winning his first outing as a two-year-old in Manchester, Tennessee. After a great two-year-old season, Jen would win his first outing as a three-year-old. He was then purchased by Harold Roberts. Harold won a competitive amateur class with him, then turned the reins over to trainer Blaze Picard, who would win both the World Championship and World Grand Championship three-year-old classes. 
This would be followed by Kendra Myers winning the Amateur Four-Year-Old Grand Championship, and then Jen would go on to win World Championships in both Amateur and Open Show Pleasure Divisions. With World and World Grand Championships in both Open and Amateur Divisions, the decision was made to stand this talented black stallion in honor of the man who saw his greatness, Harold Roberts. A Jen Dwin is now standing at Sugar Creek in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Make an appointment to breed your mare today, 931-680-0897. Tired of paying for monthly telephone service, expensive long-distance bills, and all those crazy taxes? Are you sick of spending money on telephone equipment, maintenance contracts, and service calls, all for a phone system that shackles you to 100-year-old technology and your desk? Stop it. It's time to ship your phone system to the cloud. What can the cloud do for you? Bring together remote offices, workers, and employees in the field. Make sure that you'll never miss calls by delivering them to multiple devices. Modernize faxing by allowing multiple faxes to be sent and received at once. And deliver to email. Get your voicemail messages instantly through email, too. And take advantage of an endless supply of customizable features. Host My Calls can deliver the cloud. All of this technology with low upfront costs and not one penny in capital expense. It's time for a phone solution you'll truly love from Host My Calls. Call the number below. Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. I don't want anybody to forget the winner circle. They have free shipping for any order over $100, and they do support our industry on a regular basis. So please remember the winner circle when you're getting your equine needs. It's Jerry Harris and Jim Fuller with the latest in the world of horses, including information and clips from area shows. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to go out in the ring and start and watch just watch a horse build. Pony time. Pony time. But it, it's more than that. And, and I have to use my horses a lot of times because I can go over and say, Jerry, I want to do this. And Jerry ain't going to say no mm -hmm. because I pay to have them trained. And I'm using them to make points. Exactly. It's just like. People think that they just run a horse out there and he goes to doing all this and he don't. Ponies are important. You know what got... Let's start the video. Our big breeders in was Boy. ponies. Yeah. Pony. All right, now here's a pony that we just got out. He's ready to go. And started him out with what, Jerry? A three-ounce chain. Started him out with, with a three. threes. He just lets him walk and get a little more, a little more. Yeah. Now this one right here is child broke, right? Yeah. Now they usually, they start them off like that, let them swing, keeps a little slip in them. Yeah, well I know well, most. How, what's, it, what's this one by? This one's by Arms Deal for Real too. Oh, okay, great. Big breeders, two big breeders start on ponies. My brother, Spencer Benedict, and Carrie. Yeah. All three. You see, as he's going, he keeps building, just like we're talking about in he the will. video. That's when that's training. When you get the horse shows, it's a different story. Oh, yeah. But most of the time when we do a video, Tommy, 
Mm -hmm. Nobody wants me to video until they get to rocking. Right. And that's not what it's all about. There, no, we there's, gotta train them. there's stages to go through. There have been some famous horses around that ring. Oh, yeah. The more he goes, the bigger he gets. There you go. Okay, we're going to stop and change and put a four ounce chain on him right here now. All right. I tell you what, it's beautiful out here at Uncle Nearest. People yeah. that haven't been out here, they surely need to come. Yes. It's, they've done a lot of work out here to this place. Well, there's a lot of building going on. I know there's a lot of change has been made. But all in all, this is, this is just a beautiful place. They're working real big on that. It's going to be the longest boy in the world. Yeah, so I done heard about that, pulled, but you, you go in down there, Jerry, the inside's beautiful. They just pulled the concrete and all that stuff for it. I still sit here and say, you know, remember walking down these hallways as a little kid, six, seven years old, holding my dad's hand. He's coming up here picking up brew mares from Louisiana and stuff like that. Right. And imagine one day to have somewhere something close to this, and here I am, you know, over here. You're here, yeah. getting it done. And you got you got a whole lot of talent that is your groom. Yeah. <laughs> Brad uh -huh. Kirby. Oh yes. <laughs> hey. There we go. Now he'll he'll keep building. Oh yeah, he keep building. bells and glory. It is on up no. They do clean stalls on Mondays. No, oh yeah. <laughs> you got that right. My son Wes is so particular about his barn. Sometimes he just does it himself. Now yeah, he's getting with it now. Yeah. Good, Jeremy. That right there is going to make some young person a real good yep. pony for this year. Their daddy was good behind. Well, I'm going to be honest. Most of the deals I have seen have got good back ends. Oh, yeah. And uh, they're very smart. Very smart. He's smart. Oh, yeah. You're going to see a smart one in a minute because we're going to show something that that uh, I don't know of anybody except me that's done it. Mm -hmm. Deal for real with proof that you do not offer Bob Pollock a million dollars for a horse. That's a fact. He will take it. Well, Debbie the late Bob Pollock was a great guy. <laughs> Debbie Eichner will tell you that if you got a horse you don't want to sell, don't put a price tag on it. Right. Because Not if right. somebody else wants it, they will pay exactly. it. Exactly. They will pay it. Mm -hmm. Joel Weaver showed it. Oh, yeah. Now, Tommy, we're fixing to do something now. I did this back with a wingling, a little mm -hmm. bitty one. But uh, I, wanted, I made the statement that Jerry Williams sometimes, when he teaches one to be clipped, mm -hmm. he, he just stands there, him and the horse, and clips them. Nah. Well, yeah, no, no twitch, no. No twitch, no nothing. And they didn't believe it, but I want you to watch. Right there it is. That's a yearling. That's a big filly. That's a deal filly. She never been clipped? Never been clipped. That, that's the first time we got her up. She just had a halter on. <laughs> I mean, this is first time around the merry-go-round. She did not notice. Take a little rope and put down to the bottom. Just kind of keep them where they feel comfortable. And I take these clippers and I just kind of start them. 
bomb and just kind of let them, let them listen to it run. Let it run, let it kind of get them used to listening to it. This is our very first time ever having any kind of haircut. Oh, baby. Hold on. Whoa. Talk to them. Just kind of get them, let them get used to it. Whoa. Oh, now. Oh, now. Whoa. 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 Reach up here. Grab this right here. Grab the ear a little bit. Just kind of hold it. Ooh, I'll flip some that wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You'd have to throw twitch and grab Whoa. both ears. Nope, but watch him now. Oh, now. Just kind of easy. Everything's easy with him. Hold on. Here we go. You notice he's saying, whoa, darling. What's the big emotional thing about the horse you just noticed? Oh, baby. She's, she's getting ready to be happy. We, she's enjoying it. These horses you notice what she did? The best experience mm. on she stuck cricket. her tongue and she started licking her, she salivating. That automatically tells that she's okay with what's going on. And they lick their tongue like that. Well, I can I'll tell you what, she, they have a little she, uh, right between the ears right here, and that's why she's very, very laid back, right very, I mean, she doesn't get excited. So you won't put him so far. And I usually take the ear and pull it back, and that's how far I make the brow pass, no longer than the ear. She, mm -hmm. She's a pretty good size filler. We'll take this front part and trim it up a little bit. Because she's going to turn to be a show horse. So you're going to give her a little four top. Yep. Hold on. Easy. Was it us discussing? Easy. Now. Easy. You can tell when a horse trainer's trainer this one's up. going to flat shot. You go by and they, they got four top that long. <laughs> Saving them for Lord Tang. Well, that's what he he makes a statement that uh, he's gonna leave some of it home there in case she decides to go flat top. Yeah, yeah, uh, you, you leave it. Yeah. Oh, now. Those colt trainers oh, know now. that trick. Oh, oh, oh now. When you get to be performance horses, they gotta have them braids. So you gotta you can't have just you know Dolly Parton wig up there. Oh, <laughs> Oh, now here come the tricky part right here. Trimming that ear. Sometimes it's clipping the ears. And they ain't so much a scared of the clippers, it's just, just the buzzing that's in the ears. How are gonna let it? No, she does. Hold on. Hold on. Just try to take my time. Just kind of talk yeah, to her a little bit. Let's see if Jerry put that little tip on the end. He does. He puts the tip on the <laughs> end? <laughs> really? Oh, does. I mean, he, Jerry, so far, William. So That's all good. The way he does stuff is is just, he, he and he takes his time. I mean, takes his time to do it. They have a lot of sense. But the whole biggest thing is the easy horse is just taking your time and don't rush them. Just like I said earlier, the first time of clipping them is the most important time. Because they ever have one, a bad experience on something, that sets them up for the lifetime. He's exactly right. Yes, he is. They pick up everything like a child. Easy, easy, cool. Oh, when easy. foals are born, there there's a lot of things sometimes they imprint them. They pat all four, oh. I mean, they, they, there's a process to imprint them. I don't know if they do it a lot now, but they used to back in oh, the Oh, mine, I did. Because as soon as they're born, I want to go down there. Pat on the hood. Pat on them and pat them. Let them get the your, your scent. Because I'm big about going out in the pasture with mine. Yeah. When they come and David's at the Sugar Creek, David Williams, my brother over there, they want those to come in buck wild. Yep. No leading, 
maybe clipping them, but barefoot and just bouncing off the walls butt wild. Because those trainers want to train them themselves. Yep. Like Jerry, oh. training this himself, he wants it done a certain way. Look at that ear. Mm. Whoa, whoa, darling. Whoa, darling. Whoa, now. Whoa. Fresh out of the pasture. Mm -hmm. We got mm -hmm. her up, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. we got her up mm -hmm. on Monday morning, mm -hmm. and we had her mm -hmm. whoop teeth full. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because uh, we're getting ready to start her. Can I explain what whoop teeth are? Go ahead. Wolf teeth are ones that are back in the back that can develop and be very sharp. You could consider them like wisdom teeth, something that don't need to be there, and they're not really, they're, they're a disadvantage on bidding one, bidding. Just having patience, don't rush them. So they'll shed their caps uh, at a certain stage, and then they'll reach back here. You have to get the wolf teeth out. And it's to their advantage. He gives wonderful. them a little more room, but when it comes down to bidding time. them, it's a little difficult. Well, that one, we had her whoop teeth pulled on Monday, and oh, so like then the we went they over there they like Wednesday, the and we did this, trimmed her, you and patience. then you're gonna, in a minute you're going to see what we did after he trimmed her for the first time. Well, she's kind of getting used to clipping. Yep. I was right pleased with the way she did. Jerry did a great job. You think Jerry's got enough bits over on the wall? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen it trying to didn't have a bucket full of bits. Oh, that ain't all of them. Look at her. Look at her. She's just sitting there. No twitch. She is secure to the floor where she can't sling her head. But she ain't fighting him. I mean, no. Eventually, he'll be able to undo oh, that. Oh yeah. Be done. Well, all all the rest of them that he does. I mean, once he once he does this, next time he goes in there, she ain't gonna bother him. Yeah. She's gonna be fine with him. Take your time. Easy. You're almost done. Act like he's sweet talking a lady, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. There's not a Williams that don't have a little game to him, you know? <laughs> them Williams yeah. is a, a something else. Me, Jerry, David, Hank, all of us are, you know, we're that way. Well, just about like you say, I guess it's about like cutting kids out for the first time. You try to get their mind off of it, and they Ooh. And they relax. Set up in my daddy's lap. Mm -hmm. Easy. Except mine. Uh -huh. Yep. Oh, babe. You trim her up a little bit right here on her full top here. When you get pretty much close to that full top, you want to cut down and away from it instead of up and towards it because you don't want to cut that whole full top off. Mm. Make it like a little square. Oh, babe. I don't want to cut too much off of it or the full top. So just in case if she makes a good flat shot horse, the flat shot people won't be mad at me. <laughs> That's exactly right. See? He knows what he's talking about. Another thing, too, is he made trim around her eyes. One of the biggest mistakes, Bud Seaton taught me this. One of the biggest mistakes, trimming too much of the little tentacle looking yeah. things out their eyes, uh -huh. because that is their natural growth to. Uh, he may nip off a little of it. Mm -hmm. I don't They're, like to see him. Uh, Cut the, eye, the eyelashes. Well, they don't. It's the little ones that come out. But see, that's their natural tentacle, right? To keep them from bouncing off well, the wall. Well, it'll keep them from stick. If if you find something sharp in a stall, yeah. If that eyelash hits it first, they ain't gonna put an eye out. Well, they won't. They won't have a scarlet head if they. Relax. Just going through the stall and bam. Relax. 
pretty good night vision too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they got optical vision. Oh yeah, they got great vision. They got great smell. Right. But this young lady right here, she's a fall filly. She's cute. Mm -hmm. A haircut to a horse is just about like a haircut to a human. Make him look so much better. Me and you were trying to do this, you know what it looked like. Well, there ain't no telling what it looked like. Well, at least mm -hmm. close to the Vanderbilt ER, you know. <laughs> well, they could, Kirby could just tear us down there in the trolley. <laughs> Hardest horse I ever saw to clip in my life was Pride's Pattern, an old show horse. David had him up there. Man, it took every hand in the world to get him to stand still and get clear. Now of course, he was huge, too. Now we're going to brush because oh. we done. Yeah. Hey, she been to the beauty parlor, Tommy. You know, I was just thinking that. So, in your day when you were uh, doing a hat, what would that charge? What would you charge a poor old lady for that? A bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Philly ain't got to sit on that dryer, though, does she? You know, Don Collins was a hairstylist. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey. Good one, too. Very good one. He's a great business person. Feel he is straight out of the deal field. for real. Let's show him a Joel Weaver, and his daughter's a hairstylist, mm -hmm. big time. Have yeah. A lot of sense. Stratton, big time hairstylist. Well, there pretty, you got the good. ears done. Pretty trimmed just up. Like anything else, you know, the more you do to it, the more yeah, you ready. clip her and get her used to brushing on her, the easier she'll get. She's paying attention to everything. I believe I'm going to go over to Jerry and let him give me a little fade. A fade my, fade <laughs> like me up. Ask yeah. him to trim you up like yeah, he, he, like he I, trimmed his I leg. bet money he can. Give me a little fade, Jerry. Cut that line out. Well, I'll tell you what, this filly has not had, uh, doesn't even have shoes on yet. All that's, all that doing is, is breaking them. Well, it is. It's getting them ready for, for the future and what's coming, but Jerry does now. He takes his time with everything. He yeah. he does not push them. Right. And I and I really like that. I I like being easy, and kind of moving, and he's always real particular about everything he does. Mm-hmm. For the first time, it's just that challenge. I guess is what it is. Jerry Williams has been on TV more times than Channel 6 and Rick Ensel. Yep. <laughs> he has. He sure has. He's a good one. We're still you. working on Ancestry.com now. I know. Oh, we're, we're there. We're there. Well, now we're close. Tell you, we're fixing to do something because I told him, I said, hey, let's do it. Well, we got And uh, I told him, I said, when, when are we going to put that filly to a cart? We're a wagon. He said, Oh, I don't know. And I said, well, let's do it right now. And he says, he the, says, all right. <laughs> then we do. In the hollow, they call it the worry wagon. Now, this this village never had nobody on her back. Just up out of the pasture for three or four days. Mm -hmm. We've trimmed her. We've got her ready to go. We've had her wolf teeth pulled. Mm -hmm. And now for the first time, she's got a bridle on. And now this is the first time she's going to have the card on. And when they take off, you're going to know it's the first time she's got in that car. She's headed to Bellevue. She's headed to the mountains, buddy. Well, they got a good place to run. If they, I mean, I wouldn't hit tangle up in them white fences. Well, I'm going to tell you, though, but what really surprised me with her is see there how she's watch her now. But watch how quick she calms down. Here we go. 
and realize is, hey. Who's this driving? That's Jerry. He won't let none of the rest of them do Did that. Did he give you his insurance card before he yep. started? Yep. He, he is the one. See, she's already calmed down. That, that's the best training tool in the horse business. Oh, Lord, draw, yeah. Draw reins in a car. Well, I can tell you, I was tickled with the way, cause she would she would get a little hyper and take off at times, but for the most part- now she knows it's not gonna hurt her. Hey, and I like the way she moves. What she, what folks don't realize lies about horses is the same thing with a dog, any kind of animal. They're trying, they're trying their best to figure out what you want them to do. Right. What do you want me to do? You feed me every day, I get all water, I get the best hay, help me, I'm trying to please you. What what do well, I do? Well, the cart does a lot. It teaches them to pull, yeah. use that back end, but the guiding. Yeah. And it helps to me, I believe it helps mouth them up to where they get used to the bit and they, they guide better. And she's Absolutely. already got the head shake. And it also helps from Jerry Williams, an old man gets slung against that wall too. Oh yeah. It's a young man's job. But now she 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 did you know got a little rowdy a couple of times. Let her. That's but then not, she calmed right down. That's what they do. That's no, no. natural. That's totally natural. If they don't do that, then you might have a, a, a deadhead cold. A yeah. You don't want no dud. No. See, she's already using her back hand. Look. Yeah. She's but gonna be cute. He does not do this for that long. I think he he may have carted her for five ten minutes at the most. Mm -hmm. But what he wanted her to do was get used to doing it. And each day, this, he'll do it a little bit more. This is a basic level cart drive. And then, you know, uh, the big, in the big leagues, they go to a fine harness. Oh yeah. They go to a fine harness. A little trivia on fine harness. You're supposed to show with undyed reins, undyed lines. Do you know why? Why? Because back in the 1800s and 1700s, when a lady drove the fine harness horses, they didn't want to get dye on their white gloves. That's a fact. I, I, believe, call, you, I believe you. Call, you, you'd like a dictionary. If, call, you if you don't believe that, call your brother. Call Raleigh Beard on that one now. <laughs> call Raleigh Beard. Undyed lines, no dye in them. That's why they say, oh, they got the wrong reins. No, they got the right ones, the little light brown ones. Well, I tell you, I love watching them cart. And I used yeah. to I used to go out Rising Star when it was Rising Star. Yeah. I had one out there. Did you? I'd hook him to the cart and cart it. You? I, maybe I told Jerry, I said, I said, don't Jerry Beatty. I said, I'll cart him. I'll carry him out there and hook him up. My cart it. Loved it. We're gonna take a short pause for our sponsors and we will be right back for a little flat shot action. Let's do it. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. It's Jerry Harris and Jim Fuller with the latest in the world of horses, including information and clips from area shows. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> We're back. All right, now we've seen carton, we've seen pony, we've seen two-year-old, we've seen go from a two 
two ounce to a four ounce. Clipping. Uh, seen the clipping, the trimming. We've seen a little bit of everything, and, and since we're about ready to run out of time. Flat shot. We're going to watch a little flat shot simply yes. because I told him, I said, I want to see the flat shot, but I just want to see him stand. I want to just watch him. And plus, I wanted to see him gallop. And a lot of times, folks, when they watch our program here, and I'm very proud of this, a lot of these old time horse people that watch every week, every week, they see repetitive stuff. There's a huge audience out there that, that does not see Tennessee walking horses. They don't see clipping. They don't see car. They don't see this. They hear this, that, and the other. Right. Now watch this. Flat shot. I like the fact that this one right here, the reason I keep showing him is we're training. He was going to be a show horse. Yeah. But, and a good one, but he caught warts. So you can't show him. So he's got. He's going to go to the trail. So, well, look we, how pretty. We, he is. We've got other things. We're we're working on obstacles. We're working on going through the water. And now Jerry started parking him out. Mm. And I'm going to have him let him show him model horse. Do you know what it takes now to buy one? Some nerve. Uh, no, to, <laughs> to buy a trail horse now. Oh, money. There's Big money. Sixty-five hundred to sixty-five thousand. That's it. There's a barn in Kentucky that's not below 11,000. Well, this one right here, I, Taz, that's a young man that's riding him out there. I asked him if, if, I said, I wanted to get him to speed him up and lope him some. Mm -hmm. And we did that. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Brad said he looked out there and he was loping across that field. said that I thought he'd done run away and I realized what y'all were doing. See, but that's per that's what you want to ride. That gate right there is what sells Tennessee Walking Horses. The prime example are some of our bigger owners, one of which was on a trail ride on quarter horses, looked over, a guy was riding one just like this, and he said, That's I want that. I don't mm. I'm, my butt hurts me. Yeah. I mean, my whole body's hurting me at the end of the day. I want that. Well, this right here, like actor. I, I love that. I mean to me. Mm -hmm. He's just loping across the field. And he'll go right back down into a flat walk. He's on the right lead, too. Yeah. So I, I was tickled with the way this horse performed, but we keep working with him, yeah. and I want people to see the way he changes. These horses are big time using what's called field trial. And you know yeah. what you call that? That's mm -hmm. called, well, they're, they're a little slower than that. You call that a short lope. Uh -huh. And the field trial people love it. They got to have that short lope. Well, I'm going to do Get my best this real year. Slow, they love it. We're going to show different different things. We're going to show the horses the way they are. We're going to show them as they improve. Yep. But we're also going to a bunch of shows, and we're going to a barn. I'm not going to tell you whose barn, but we're next week we're going to be doing the whole show at one barn. The trainer to the stars. The trainer to the stars. Absolutely. We'll see y'all next week, folks. Thanks. For <laughs> Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner's circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Ah, uh, please start talking.